Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of how to make a game with Python and Pygame series. In this video we will continue from where we left off last week. Last time we basically created a really simple player which we can move around with pressing arrow keys. And today I will show you how you can restrict player's movement to window boundaries. And also I will show you how you can add some enemies. But first we have to do a small cleanup of our code since we want our game to be scalable. If you like the content I'm posting on this channel, consider subscribing and don't forget to destroy that like button. It really helps out with my channel. If you like to be notified every time I post more amazing videos, also check that bell icon. Now let's make our game playable. First we have to make some adjustments in our existing project. This part may seem boring to you since we will just move our existing code in different places, but robust structure is necessary for later development and scaling the game. In case you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, I suggest you learn about that first, since we will be using a lot of its approaches here in this video. First change that we will apply is to separate code for player into an includable file which is in Python called module. I will create new file and name it player, player.py. Inside that file we can create new class and name it player as well. We also have to import pygame. Then I will create a constructor for that class. In constructor we will add all properties that are relevant to our player. So we will add coordinates x and y, width and height of a player and velocity and color. I will set defaults for velocity and color, since those are not often changing. We are currently moving and drawing our player, so for both of those functionalities I will create a function inside our class. So let's define function move and as our arguments we will set self and keys. keys will be the array that will pass to this function. The conditions for movement we can copy from our main game. And change position variables from x to self.x and we can apply the same for y and the velocity, since we want to call them from our object. Next is the function draw. Again we can copy that from our game and change values the same way as we did in move function. For now this will be good for our player class, now we can include it in our main game. Let's import our player module. From player import player. Keep in mind the caps. First we can replace player's properties with actually calling our player's module. Let's assign player equal to player which is our object and as argument set values of player's position and transform. Keep in mind that color and velocity are set by default. Since we want to keep everything organized, here as well we will create two functions for updating and drawing our objects. In update function we will call player.move but first we'll pass it an array of keys that are pressed. In draw function we want to keep filling our screen so our player don't leave the trail. Then we want to draw our player and last but not least update display of Pygame.
And of course, we have to call both of those functions inside our game loop. Keep in mind that you can run our game only through file game.py. You cannot run the module of a player that we wrote. So if we try to run our game, you can see that the result stays the same, but our code is much prettier to look as well as edit. Next thing that we will implement is restricting our player's movement to window boundaries. As you can see, now our player can go outside our display, which is not the functionality we want. We can simply fix that issue inside player's move function, where we have to add conditions for player's position according to the screen size. For condition for player's movement to the left, check if self.x is greater than 0, 0 representing the start of our screen. For when player wants to move right, we have to restrict its movement by checking if player's x position is less than 800, which is v width of our screen. We do pretty much the same for next two conditions, except we use screen height instead. If we run our game, you can see that our player cannot leave the screen. But if we go to the bottom or left side of the screen, you can see that player still lives. This is because we have to subtract its height or width from screen boundaries. If you run it now, you can see it works as expected. Last thing that we will add in this episode is simple enemy that will move from one point to another and back. To keep everything organized, we will create a separate class for this as well. So as we did for the player, we can create new file called enemy.py. Then we have to import pygame. We will initialize enemies class and add a constructor with the same arguments as the player. One argument that we will add is self.write, which will be true or false depending on enemy's movement direction. Draw function can be copied from the player as well. We will just change the rect function to the circles since the, since the enemy should be yellow circle. We also have to adjust arguments for circle since it has a bit different structure than the rectangle function. For now, we will save our class and import it into the game.py file. As the same as we did for the player, from enemy import enemy, again, make sure to check the caps. Now we will initialize the enemy object with similar values like player, but a little bit smaller and faster. Then we can call enemy's draw function inside our main draw function and our enemy should display in our game. So if we run our game, okay, as you can see, we forgot to change its color to yellow. So let's fix that quickly. RGB code for yellow is 255, 255 and the last value is zero. If you run it again, you can see its correct color. Now we also have to move our enemy. Let's write a move function inside our enemy's class. The move function will have two arguments, which are boundary x1 and boundary x2, 
which basically mean in between which points enemy should be allowed to move. We will add conditions for position where enemy shouldn't be. And if this is the case, we will negate our self.write property. If this is confusing, just hear me out. We will check for value of self.write property and accordingly move our enemy. So if write is set to true, move enemy to write by adding self.x and velocity. And if it's not, move it to the left by subtracting self.x by velocity. Now we can save our enemy class and run the game. As you can see, our player is still not moving, and this is because we haven't called move function in our main file. So let's call enemy.move inside our update function and add some boundaries. Make sure that those boundaries are inside our displayed game window. Let's run our game for the last time and admire on our creation. Now we actually have somewhat of a playable game, at least it looks like it. But since our enemies can't really hurt us, it's no fun to play. But we will fix that in next episode, so make sure to stay tuned. All the source code we are developing here is available down in the description of, on my GitHub account, so make sure to check it out. Another reminder to smash those buttons below the video. And also, if you have any recommendations for future videos or any topic you want me to explore, make sure to post them down in comment section. I hope you guys like this video and I will see you guys next time.